Ah, Venice. You've probably heard of it. Place of romance. Conjurers. A floating city in the middle of the sea. Oh well, today I'm gonna attempt to walk over there. These shots weren't actually from my journey and I'm really hoping that it won't be like this but I got no idea if it's possible so I'm just gonna try and if I succeed I'm gonna take you on a little tour in Venice itself. Prisoner in here. Okay, now I'm in a bit of a pickle. I got a highway in front of me that I have to cross. Better do it now. And another side of the highway. This train is not made for pedestrians. Oh God, yes! I already started to doubt myself if it, was, if it was a good idea, but I have found a biker's line. Yeah, it seems that it's possible to walk to Venice and you don't have to do it in the middle of the highway over there. Well, that sign is a lie. I know that I have over five kilometers that way still to go and I better slow down. That's a sign that we're getting closer. I think this is just a teaser for the statues to come in the city itself. Well, I guess I've made it. And first things first, walking to Venice is not a tourist attraction. It is not beautiful. It's extremely noisy. There's a typical highway trash and the extensive uh, railway lines hide any kind of good view on the city itself. Well, but the walk to Venice is definitely not the reason why I came here. It's one of the most unique cities in the world. It consists of 118 islands uh, connected by over 400 bridges. The city was founded after 5th century. It literally to this day stands on wooden spikes like this. The spikes were driven into the mud and throughout the centuries uh, seawater has uh, turned the wood into stone-like structures. To put it in simple words, Venice is standing on 1.6 thousand years old wooden spikes. Fifty-five thousand people living in here permanently, but in 2019 there was around 5.5 million tourists. So a hundred times more tourists than locals living in here. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Got to love Italian. Although Venice is a huge tourist city with hundred times more tourists than people living here then Italian ladies still are gonna put their washing out on the lines over the channels because
I must say that I really like those narrow walking streets. It really feels like I'm walking in a canyon or something. The streets, they're so narrow. That's probably like a meter or something. And it's not getting any better. This one is called Calle Varisco and it's the narrowest street in Venice. I'm not sure if you can see, but both my shoulders are touching the walls. And on the narrowest spot, it's 53 centimeters. I'm not sure what I would do if somebody walked the opposite way. Well, as it turns out, not every road leads to somewhere great. Wines on tap. Once again, just gotta love Italians. So I'm just grabbing a quick stop and uh, eating two really traditional things. All around the riverside you can see people with uh, those orange glasses and that's uh, spritz. So it's an Italian cocktail. I have a little bit bitter, a little bit sour. It's really lovely. And this plate over here is called Sicetti. And I think the best way to say what it is uh, would be Italian finger foods. So they're part of every social gathering. Anywhere where people sit down, it's gonna be Sicetti. Okay, for our fire breaks, please. All right. A good wine prosecco and soda. Spritz is ready. Spritz is literally so popular in here that you can grab them to go in a plastic cup like this. Another thing that Venice is definitely known for are the congelas. Congelas. Con congelas. Congelas. It's not the tourist season at the moment, so a lot of them are empty. But still you can see people on the channels just enjoying the, the city in a totally different way. Conjura ride does cost between 80 and 100 euros and if you can't really afford the private ride then on the channels there's uh, conjulas that work as public transport as well and these are only about 2 euros per ride and now we're getting to the most famous part of the whole city San Marco Square It's the first time in Venice when I really feel that there's room to move around it. The square is really big and as it's not tourist season, there's not too many people in here. So the feeling is totally different than the rest of the city has been so far. Throughout the years, Venice has been claimed to be both the most beautiful and the most romantic city in the world. And before coming here, I would not have believed it. But at least now in November, when there's not too many people, this place has a magical feel to it. Charm or this vibe that makes it stand out from the rest. It 
truly feels that uh, time in the city flows a little bit differently. Although the whole Venice has been quite wonderful so far, then I must say that the best thing I've done is uh, wandering off the beaten track, seeing the small streets, being able to see just those tiny, tiny bits of the lives that the locals live in here. And it's, and it's really, really wonderful. And now I'm gonna try to find a small restaurant somewhere to try some real good Italian food. As Venice is definitely known for its seafood then um, for tonight's dinner I decided to go with uh, Venetian cuttlefish with uh, polenta. And uh, while I'm waiting for the food I'm actually quite excited to tell you guys that uh, today's video it's the first video on this channel that is uh, sponsored by Skillshare. So Skillshare is pretty much a online community for everyone who's excited about learning. It doesn't matter if it's for new skills or deepening existing knowledge. And you've probably noticed as well, but thanks to Skillshare, lately my videos have definitely gotten better. And especially thanks to teacher Thomas Daher with his class storytelling through film. I have not studied filmmaking in a university myself and I just feel that uh, it's amazing to have this like-minded community of people to learn together with. And of course Skillshare is not all about filmmaking. They have literally thousands of courses ranging from like photography, painting to making money while traveling or even cooking and all the glasses they are especially designed for learning which means no ads and there's a teacher in front of the class guiding you through the whole process but uh, before I get too carried away Skillshare has also given me the opportunity to offer a one month free trial period to the first thousand subscribers of this channel so if you feel that you are one of those people who are into learning and personal development then make sure to check out the link in the description it looks like my food is coming the weird thing is that uh, I don't know which one is uh, the fish and which one is the polenta. I do think that the yellow one is polenta. It's supposed to be like a boiled porridge of cornmeal. First of all, I just have to say that the colors on this plate are amazing. I know it doesn't matter a lot because the taste of the food is the main thing, but this yellow and black and just the way it came to me it's it looks delicious but honestly when it comes to the cuttlefish then it's it looks beautiful but it's simply a salty fish sauce with pieces of fish so overall everything on that plate works together but would I order it in a restaurant again not really So I had my Venetian food experience. Well, Venetian food was not too impressive for me. Maybe it was the restaurant, I probably should have picked a smaller place. But what did really impress me was the city itself. When I came here this morning, I thought it was gonna be a tourist trap because, well, it's Venice, everybody knows about this place. But I don't even know what it is, if it's, the romance in the air or if, it, if it's the channels or I am not sure but Venice is definitely a place I want to come back to but as it is dark already outside and I still have about 10 kilometers to walk back then 
it's time to wrap up. I really enjoyed having you guys with me today and I will see you next Thursday. Bye, take care. And if anyone is wondering, today's journey took me 42,000 steps.